Greetings and salutations loyal viewers of this channel, my name is Sean and today we got to talk about this migrant who went viral a few weeks ago due to him encouraging people to immigrate illegally to the United States of America, defraud the asylum system, and seize people's homes in these squatter schemes that we're seeing all over the country because now he's claiming that the US government is oppressing him because they're going to deport him because he's a horrible person and definitely should be deported. So this guy is actually claiming that he is in need of asylum because he defrauded the U.S. asylum system and he's one of the few migrants that are experiencing the consequences of that. It's amazing, honestly. It's one of my favorite stories of a very long time due to the comedic gold, even though it is kind of sad that this is the state of the US immigration system. Now we're gonna get into it, but before we do, I wanna thank everyone who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. And remind you that on Saturday, April 27th, I will be at MindsFest in Austin, Texas. Link to tickets in the top of the description. Promo code AJW for 20% off. Venezuelan national dubbed the migrant influencers at the center of controversy this morning. He has been using TikTok to coach migrants how to live in the U.S. by taking advantage of laws protecting squatters. Hannah Doba reports. In his most recent controversial TikTok video, Moreno is telling his followers to avoid living on the streets in the United States. They can, quote, invade empty homes and live there, saying under U.S. law, if a house is uninhabited, it can be seized referring to squatting rights in our country. Now look, I've said repeatedly on this channel that I'm not somebody who just hates migrants because they immigrated to the United States of America. Obviously, I have no issue with Latinos. I happen to be half Latino myself. That being said, I'm half Puerto Rican, so birthright citizenship is a feature of being Puerto Rican. However, my main issue is the fact that a lot of these people are clogging up the asylum system. They're fraudulently claiming asylum when they're economic migrants, and we have a lot of people that want to come to the United States of America, but the fact of the matter is, the asylum system is for people fleeing persecution, and you're supposed to claim asylum in the next safe country, and if you look at a map from where Venezuela is to the United States of America, there are plenty of other valid options along the way that they're not doing, because obviously, these people are economic migrants. On top of that, the amount of money that we're spending on these people, the amount of money that we're putting into making sure they live comfortable, could be better utilized on the American citizen. And we've talked about this in the context of the city of New York, where these people have to be sheltered in hotels and all these other different luxury accommodations. Volunteer advocates argue the city should put these migrants in some of the most expensive pieces of real estate in the world. He could have easily, along with Governor Hochul, opened up all the vacant luxury apartments. We are on 57th Street right now. This is Billionaire's Row. Half of the super towers on this street are empty. Of course, that begs the question, who would pay for all those luxury apartments? There's no accountability for the money, and now they're actually being issued debit cards in order to buy groceries, supposedly to save money on food, even though they're in hotels and they can't cook their own food right there. It's a disaster all the way through. That being said, th this guy is, is special. He he's above and beyond because he's essentially a migrant that was created in a lab for the Trump campaign to make sure that he wins the 2024 election. Let me, let me show you what I mean. Avoid living on the streets in the United States. They can, quote, invade empty homes and live there, saying under U.S. law, if a house is uninhabited, it can be seized, referring to squatting rights in our country. That video garnered almost 4 million views. As we have more migrants moving into cities, uh, more homelessness, uh, we are going to see more of it. More, more squatting. James Burling is a property rights attorney. But they're talking about all the advantages that you can get from squatting. Uh, it's inevitable that it's going to increase. So right there, for those of you out there in the audience, this is what made this guy very famous. It's what put him on the map. And of course, it's a TikTok video because everything bad goes viral on TikTok, where he is encouraging people to invade the United States of America, go into unoccupied homes and telling them that they will be protected by the law if they do so. That way, they don't have to live on the street because it's not enough that this guy is getting paid a bunch of money by the taxpayer, all his meals covered, his health care covered, things that regular ordinary citizens don't get covered, but he has to encourage other people to come to the United States of America while screaming into his phone, by the way, 
to commit crimes, to, to, to do other additional illegal things, because all we need is more problems in the United States, like these squatter problems, except with illegal migrants defrauding the asylum system. Absurd in every possible way, insane in every possible way. Obviously, this is going to lead to conflict between property owners and these criminals. It could cost people their lives, and this should have been taken down immediately on TikTok, but of course, it went viral first to encourage as many people as possible in order to do so. And by the way, a lot of the times that this kind of misinformation that gets into Latin America is the exact thing that drives people to come to this nation. It's the exact thing that led to those childhood arrivals under the Obama administration. It was a mistranslation of the DACA policy. And that leads to disastrous results on a humanitarian level. So obviously, you can't let this happen. But the thing is, that's just the tip of the iceberg. The thing is, this migrant TikTok influencer has been flaunting what the taxpayer has been spending on him in our faces repeatedly well before this and we have other videos that have been captured by the new york post and to me it's insane that it was allowed to get to this level for this obvious scammer defrauding our system and i'm glad he is finally facing consequences but when you see the amount of money that we've been spending on him it's not nearly enough in past videos the illegal migrant bragged that he came to the united states to vacation and now lives off u.s taxpayers because he had a child in this country he also tells us followers that he waits for Americans hard earned pension checks to come in every month. Yeah, that's right. So this guy actually came to the United States of America, wink, wink on vacation. He actually came here so that he can have an anchor baby in order to keep him here. And he posts over and over again. And you could see on the screen, if you're a podcast listener, let me describe this to you a bunch of different videos of him bragging about how he's mooching off the taxpayers. And he's doing it in such an incendiary way based on the fact that he has an anchor baby. And it's hundreds maybe of videos that you could see on screen of him doing this. But it was only when he brought up this particular squatting issue that people actually gave him the attention he deserved. But this is a perfect example of what is broken in the United States of America's immigration system. In another video, he is urging fellow Venezuelans to pay the fines of a 15-year-old migrant who allegedly shot a tourist in Times Square, saying, quote, today it could be him, tomorrow it could be one of you. I mean, it's absurd in every possible way. You have a migrant who, by the way, they said pay the fines of, it's pay the bail for, I'm assuming, who shot a tourist in Times Square in New York City, a criminal migrant. I believe that person died, and I remember seeing that guy cry like a baby when he was being perp walked, deservedly so, because he's a criminal who came to this country, defrauded the asylum system, joined up with the gang or was already part of a gang and murdered or attempted murder on an individual. But yeah, this is who this guy is. He's praising the criminals because he is in fact a criminal. Now, the New York Post actually has another video that I have to show you. We have to see it for ourselves because that's how absurd our immigration system is. And I want you to look in the face of the consequences of this lax border policy, of the welfare state, of these gods here rights that you get when you immigrate to the United States of America illegally, and of sanctuary cities. Es que yo facture más que ustedes sin necesidad de andar como esclavos. Capichi. So yeah, for my podcast listeners, you have this guy holding up a bunch of different $100 bills with his baby in the background, his anchor baby that he considers his meal ticket, and he's talking about how he got all of this money without having to work like slaves, presumably what he views you as, the average, ordinary, everyday American citizen who has to pay for your own damn kid, who actually has to work in order to earn money, and he's just mocking the American population for allowing this to happen, and honestly... Officials like Joe Biden, who said that these kind of people should surge to the border. I would, in fact, make sure that there is we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. Deserve to be mocked. Esa es la diferencia tuya y mía. Que yo siempre voy a hacer dinero sin mucho trabajo. So he said right there, that's the difference between you and me. I'm always going to make more money without doing any work. Again, this guy is flaunting, mocking our immigration system, 
to our faces on social media becoming an influencer based on this and this was all allowed to be let go this was all considered perfectly fine it was not until this crossed lines with the squatter story that people gave him the attention that he deserved and that there were actually consequences for him and now we see this guy whining and crying like a baby because he's been arrested and he is set for deportation even though that should have happened a very long time ago Estoy en peligro de muerte en United States. Necesito protección. Now look, while you might want to have some satisfaction because this guy is making crying TikToks saying that he's in danger, that he needs protection from the United States after mocking us, after calling us slaves, after mocking taxpayers, after saying that he's going to get the pension money that the elderly put in in order to cover the expense of his anchor baby, the fact of the matter is... This is nothing to write home about. This is nothing to cheer about. This is nothing to celebrate because this guy was able to scam our system for years, have an anchor baby who got birthright citizenship, get welfare from the taxpayer in order to take care of it. And the only reason that he is subject to deportation is because he wouldn't stop broadcasting it. He put out dozens, if not a hundred videos mocking the taxpayer. And it took till that point for it to go viral on social media for people to say that they were not okay with this for somebody to deport him. Now, this isn't going to cause a reconsideration of our immigration policy this isn't going to cause us to re-examine how much money we're allotting to these scammers or anything like that this is just us going to send this particular individual out of the country eventually it's going to take a long period of time and then everything's going to continue business as usual but everybody who heard those messages everybody who's been scamming the asylum system the immigration system for as long as this person that doesn't post it on social media that doesn't brag about it that doesn't encourage other Others to commit the same crimes that they're committing they're still going to do it. They're still going to keep on trucking. They're still going to make all this money while they snicker in private about you working like a slave. They're still going to have their anchor baby being taken care of while they mock you for having to pay for the medical needs and all these other costs related to your own children. They're going to get away with it just like this guy would have gotten away with it had it not been for the fact that he needed to brag and mock you to your face about how much he was getting away with it. This is not a good story. This is not even a good conclusion. It's not even a good ending. While it's satisfying to see him cry, while it's satisfying to watch the video of him being arrested, the fact of the matter is none of the core underlying incentives have changed. Nothing about our immigration policy has been altered or augmented in order to prevent this from happening or continuing to happen. So there's a lot of people out there in this country that immigrated here illegally, defrauded the asylum system, overstayed on a vacation, have an anchor baby that feel the exact same way that believe that they are entitled to do all the things that he did but they're going to be smart enough not to post about it on social media essentially what they're saying is that as long as this doesn't become an embarrassment individually for the biden administration we're not going to do anything about it we're not going to intercept we're not going to enforce the law we're not going to deport you and honestly had it not been for the fact that this occurred in such a bold way and this guy was living in Ohio and he might have been living in a sanctuary city, we might have had government officials still trying to protect this guy. We might have had them still trying to shield him from ICE despite the fact that he was defrauding the taxpayers. I'm sorry, but defrauding people through the welfare system and bragging about how you're taking food off the table of our elderly? Unacceptable. You need to go. But more importantly, the incentive structure needs to change. These are called magnets. They draw people into this country. And nothing is going to undo the damage that this guy did by encouraging these illegal migrants to steal the property of your hardworking American citizens. But hey... Those are just my thoughts. So you might want to celebrate. You might totally disagree with me. You might want to take the victory right now. But I think I'm right about this. But if you disagree, let me know your opinion down in the comments below. If you like this video, then show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on my social media. Support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the Venezuelan migrant who encouraged people to steal people's houses getting deported. Till next time.